Both Governor Perry and his campaign say that Perry's father painted over the offensive name back in 1983 or 84. Yet the Post cites several, seven people, most of them anonymously, some who say they saw the word more recently. Keep in mind, though, their recollections of when they saw it range from the 1980s, the 1990s, to as little as three years ago. And remember, the Perry campaign said the word was painted over no later, no later than 83 or 84. So there's a lot of daylight between the two sides. Here to talk about it, Eric Erickson, editor-in-chief of RedState.com, former George W. Bush press secretary Ari Fleischer, now a CNN contributor and available on Twitter at Ari Fleischer, also a political analyst and devout Texan, Roland Martin. So uh, Roland, Perry's uh, supporters are saying, look, this is, uh, this is slanderous, this article. Nobody's saying that Rick Perry chose this name of the farm or, or of the ranch or painted it on that rock. Is he getting a raw deal here? Well, first of all, to, su to suggest it's slanderous uh, makes no sense. The reality is uh, there are people who are saying, some people were quoted, uh, their names used in that Washington Post story, that that was a name on a rock. It was very visible. He said we painted over it. Uh, and so, look, if you are the campaign and you say there are some inconsistent statements, but you know what? You knock them down. You knock them out of the way. Uh, and so, therefore, uh, I, I read their statement. But look, you must knock this thing down, be very clear. And at the end of the day, is the rock still there? Are you still going there? And remove it. It makes no sense. Forget painting over it. Just destroy it. It still makes no sense at all. Uh, Eric, you a agree with the critics who said this w was slanderous. Um, you, you stick by that? Has slanders, how so? Well, you know, this is an attack on Rick Perry trying to paint him as a racist. And, you know, these come up all the time. I don't think anyone who knows Rick Perry would think he's a racist. And, and to, to be fair here, his, his father didn't invest in this property. It was a, a hunting lease, which are pretty common in a lot of places. And, and you just have access to the land to hunt on. You don't control or manage or, or own it. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the statement that the rock may or may not have been seen, I haven't seen any pictures of the rock to, to see what his current condition is. I don't know that there are any pictures of the rock. His, his father painted it over it. The paint faded. They, at some point, apparently tipped the rock over, or someone did. The rock was set up again. I mean, to, to tie this into Rick Perry and say this is, Rick Perry is a racist, or oh, this is the product of being raised in the South or in West Texas, uh, it, it's really making a mountain out of what I really think is a molehill. Ari, you think the impression that Perry's being unfairly attacked may actually help him here? Well, there certainly has been a conservative rallying to Rick Perry and a backlash. I think it's in, in large part because what Eric's talking about, there's just this sense in Republican politics, almost doesn't matter who you are, what you do, you'll get accused of being a racist, and when it happens, people rally. But there is another side of it here, and, and that's sensitivity. You know, I do think that, for heaven's sake, if you're African American and you heard that somebody had a piece of land, even though they didn't own it, and they didn't name it, that had that name, of course it's going to get your back up. That's human nature and it's understandable. But to defend the governor here, it is a fact. He didn't name it. He didn't own it. He had 2% of that entire ranch that he got to use for hunting. Uh, I asked the uh, Perry campaign today, why didn't they just get rid of the rock? Apparently it's some gigantic boulder. It's not the type of thing that you could just throw out. But I think the intention was clear in the 80s, 30 years ago, when they said they painted it over, that they objected to the name. And that's, I think, what's most important here. And, and, Anderson, look, here's, here's the deal. And, and I totally understand what Ari said, but it is a question of uh, what you do uh, in your own life. It's no different to me that if somebody decides to join an all-male golf club or, or the golf club that excludes African Americans, it is going to come up. And so uh, it, it, it speaks to an individual. So is this going to be, to me, a long-lasting story? No. Of course not. Uh, Herman Cain has backed off of it. No other Republican candidates are making an issue out of it. But no doubt, if you're on the Republican side, the last thing you want is Rick Perry having to deal with this story. Already he's having difficulty over, over the whole debate issue. And so the party is trying to figure out who is the candidate who, who frankly, can be strong enough to go against President Obama. And so it doesn't help him, but I doubt very seriously it's going to knock him out of the campaign. And so more than likely in 48 hours, it's gone. Ari, is this the kind of story, as a press secretary, you would advise your candidate, look, just put out a statement as they have, or, or campaign aides put out a statement, but don't, 
necessarily come on camera and say something about it. This is the classic issue where a candidate, if he had gotten in earlier, he would have brought it up himself if he could have done so. This is the type of thing that when he's giving a speech about racial relations in America or about immigration and how, as he is opening to immigrants, he could have talked about insensitivity. And for example, my family had a lease on land and 30 years ago it said this and we covered that up because it was wrong. We painted that. If he had brought it out himself, it would have been very different. He didn't have time because he got in so late, and so he was hit with the story and now has to react to it. He will have to deal with it himself in person. I think that's just the way the press corps operates. Next time he's out on the trail and reporters see him, they're going to ask him anyway, so I don't think he can just say he's handled it. But this is going to fade in just a matter of days. This is, this is not the stuff of major politics or uh, something that's going to last long. Eric, did you see this as a kind of a hit job by the Washington Post? I mean, do, would, would this have been... The same kind of story yeah, that yeah. they would have done you in know, Democrat? You know, I did. Well, you know, I think it was the Media Research Center today, for example, who pointed out in just two days the Washington Post has already dedicated more words to this story than they did to the entire Jeremiah Wright controversy yeah. back in 2008. But, I mean, likewise, I mean, the Washington Post has a history of this. Back in 2007 during the Cray Deeds Bob McDonald election, they never covered the Virginia governor's race in the Washington Post in the front page section except for five days. The first day contains seven articles about Bob McDonald having race issues, and then the next four days, subsequent stories on Bob McDonald having race issues until someone pointed out that Cray Deed had issues with a Confederate flag, and suddenly the story went back to the Metro section. You know what, Anderson? Uh, and, 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 and I'm sure Al Gore does this. I, but here's the deal, Anderson. I'm sure Al Gore is sitting at home right now saying how many people did stories about him created the Internet. Look. You have people on the left, on the right, Democrats and Republicans, who complain about stories all the time. And so to say it's a hit job here, to say Fox News does this, to say the New York Times does that, the reality is when you run for president, you're going to get these kinds of stories. You deal with them up front, and then you move on. Uh, let's move on. Eric Erickson, Ari Fleischer, Roland <laughs> Martin, thank you very much.